Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you your daily Tesla report for Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. But before I walk you through the charts, as usual, just want to encourage you to please click like if you haven't already, subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel, share the content if you would with friends and colleagues, and check out wickedstocks.com, where we offer a full suite of both daily and weekly analytical videos just like this one. Daily analysis in the SPY and the Triple Q, that is the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 ETFs. Weekly analysis in the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ 100 index, the long bond ETF, the TLT, as well as two individual stock picks a week that you never see on YouTube. That is eight a month that cater to the three to five week swing trader out to the three to five month near term investor. We're always looking for at least 20% moves on those stock picks. And you can check out all of this for no cost for five days. We offer a five-day free trial up front with a Wickedstocks.com subscription. So sign up for Wickedstocks.com. Check it all out. If you don't like what you see within five days, you can cancel your subscription at no cost to you whatsoever. On with the charts. So big picture. Uh, we closed last week. Boy, it seems a lot longer than that. But we did close last week. Actually, a week ago today, we closed below that 248.78 structure on the daily chart. Not by the 1%, the desired 1% margin for technical clarity, sell signal reliability, but a sell signal it was by one measure. And we certainly gapped lower, continued south on the earnings from Thursday of last week. And uh, within just a couple more days, Friday of last week, was it Friday? Or no, it was Monday of this week. Uh, we tested uh, what had been a two to three week objective, 189.08, still a three to five week objective. We did so in about as many days. 202 and a quarter is a rising two thirds speed line projected off that 101.81 January low, also taking into account the July 23 high. So we have tested it. We came very close, I should say, certainly inside the 1% zone. I call it a test, essentially. On the weekly chart, it's 200.75, and we've come off of it moderately honestly since it can continue to contain weekly selling pressures and for those of you who trade the 2 to 3 week time frame that was a buy opportunity that could yield 25018 again over the next 2 to 3 weeks now we don't have a signal for that and I'll be doing that in a moment uh, but um, that is really kind of sort of the 2 to 3 week dynamic but you know this was a significant sell signal uh, there's no two ways about it below 24878 and I do think that Karen Carries with it a likely 186.97 objective. So while we can expect a decent bounce off of 200.75, which has already occurred, the question begs: Can we expect recovery into the upper 240s, low 250s over the next few weeks? You know, and the answer to that, I'm gonna get to that in a moment. I'll tell you right now, it's a settlement above 232.81. This is a new descending one-third speed line projected off that July high using uh, the recent low. That is Monday's low. And so it is the level to settle above for then clearly, yes, indicating 250.18 within three to five more days where we could actually top out through November and fall off again back to 189.08. In fact, I'm going to take us back to the weekly chart to show you if I could erase this two-third speed line, I would. But um, I'll say that um, you know sell signal opportunity presents or sell opportunity presents rather at 248.78 anticipating 186.97 we could test 186.97 over the next couple of weeks and from there rally back to 248.78 within a month or two of doing so that is what I see as the possible uh, two-sided dynamic as we move into Q1 of early next year. Uh, it would be a settlement of below 186.97 at the end of a week that would set off a pretty significant sell signal. I would anticipate at least a retest of that 101.81 January low in the months to follow, but I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Let's get back to the day itself. This is, our, this is our support for the week and through next week, above which 258.18, not out of the question, over the next few weeks. 
So uh, here are our levels for the day. This is really sort of just a repeat of what I've been saying the last few days, except the numbers are slightly different. They are slightly lower. So we came close to testing the 223.05. This is nothing more than a former channel bottom, as you can see. And that, having settled below it several days ago, offers a decent resistance, a decent short-term ceiling of resistance on the way back up. We didn't actually test it on Tuesday, but we, we came pretty close. I don't know exactly how close, but pretty close as you can see. And now that we have, this is a better image of it, now that we have come close to testing it, we can quite easily fall back to 202 and a quarter by Friday's close. 202 and a quarter is on the weekly chart, 200.75. I'm going to go back to this chart to cover the downside. So 223.05 is our day ceiling. And as I was saying, I'm talking to three to five day swing traders now as well. Day traders can sell 223.05. Three to five day swing traders can as well. Maybe you're a three to five day swing trader who already went short on Tuesday when we approached this former channel bottom. And you're now holding out for 202 and a quarter over the next three to five days. For the day itself, on the way down, we've got these carefully chosen minor points. The one that I like the most is 209.97. And over the last two days, nothing more than a 5 8 downside Fibonacci. It can contain intraday, possibly daily selling pressures. And yes, if we break 209.97 today, we could actually retest 202 and a quarter on an intraday basis. I actually th more of the mind that it would be a settlement today below 209.97 that then would signal a yet another test of 202 and a quarter tomorrow where we can bottom out through the rest of the week and from here rally back to 223.05 within several days. And yes, over the next few weeks, we can push up into the lower 250s. But as I just mentioned, our signal for the low 250s is a settlement above this 232.81 speed line. So let me dissect that a little bit with this chart. I pushing a through or opening above, I doubt the opening above, but pushing through 223.05 on Wednesday uh, does allow 232.81 on an intraday basis. This could take a better part of the day, but I would anticipate that as a real possibility. Pushing or opening above 223.05 allows 232.81 intraday. I'll also say that merely closing today above 223.05 should yield 232.81 tomorrow, Thursday, where we can also tap out for the day and is our upward pivot point through the rest of the week. So our downward pivot point, 223.05, we are below. And having come close to testing it, we can, over the next few days, fall back to 202 and a quarter. In terms of our aggressive upward pivot point, that is 232.81. So we're heavy below 223.05 through the rest of the week. We really don't turn bullish through the rest of the week and into early next unless we can close above 232.81. And then we're three to five days or less from testing 248.78, which is on the daily chart 250.18. You can see them up here. And that is really shown here. Closing above 232.81 signals this upper 240s, low 250s within a full week of trade. As we spill into next week, I may well call this a three-star resistance. I'm just reluctant to still, given the still relatively heightened volatility. Um, but um, just know uh, that if you're, you know, if you're a three to five day swing trader or a two to three week swing trader, I don't have a problem with you selling 232.81 with that in mind. Just keep a relatively tight stop loss. You know, I don't like to risk more than 1% of my entire trading capital on any particular trade. Now, everybody's a little different. I know day traders uh, tend to be a little bit more speculative, but a little bit more gunslinger, if you will. And, uh, you know, but, you know, there's nothing more debilitating than watching, you know, 10% of your trading capital evaporate in a few short days. And so uh, if we close above 232.81 or even pushing through it, you know, I don't want to tell you how to manage your risk. That is a very personal process. Uh, I don't want to pigeonhole anybody, but uh, I just wouldn't want to see us uh, push through or close above 232.81 and you short all the way back into the low 250s and then some, all right? So that's that. 
Um, let's cover the downside. I don't see this happening today, uh, but we may over the next few days uh, close below 202 and a quarter. And if we do, we're just a few short days away from testing 189.08. And this is our multi-week four-star support area that if tested, as I said earlier, can absorb selling through November. And from here, we can round back up. At that point in time, if this channel holds, we have new channel resistance that is presently in the low 260s and dropping, converging over the next week and a half with this former channel bottom. But honestly, it will be this blue line that I will then honor as our upward pivot point into Q1. If we test 189.08, over the next three to five days. If we close today below 202 and a quarter, we should by Friday's close test 189.08. Just know that it is an area that if you're short the market over the two to three week time frame, uh, it is a good profit taking area and a good long entry for not only day traders, three to five day swing traders, but really one to two month position traders who could then ride this thing all the way back up into the low 250s. Um, you know, I'm pushing 10 minutes. I'm going to leave it at that. That's all I have for Wednesday's Tesla report. Please click like, share, subscribe, and check out wickedstocks.com.